vehicle, but based on our internal models, once we reduce weight to production spec, Aptera's efficiency should land exactly where we hoped, or even better. Hi there, this is Dr. Eli. I'm going to talk about solar-powered car. I will explain the meaning of this sentence and the real behavior of such a car. I will only talk about industrial machines, not experimental designs that usually compete in challenges all over the world. A few years ago, I discovered the car that you can see here, made by a company called Lightyear. It was a classical sedan with solar cells on the top surfaces, around 5 square meters. But due to the size, the weight and the price of the automobile, Lightyear did not get a success with this model. The Model Zero was discontinued in January 2K23. A new model, Lightyear 2, will be proposed with a more realistic price, now around $40,000, but few information is available nowadays. So let's focus on the Aptera car. The Aptera device introduces a new concept, a car specifically designed for energy efficiency. According to their claim, you can select different configurations, battery size for up to a thousand miles of range. The price is also more suited for the general public than where the Lightyear Zero model. The solar energy can only add up to 40 miles of free ride in a sunny environment. Let, let's dive into characteristics of the car. According to optimum condition, the three square meters of solar cells can produce 700 watts of power. The approximate yield of the cell is around 23%. I tried to compute the amount of energy grabbed for 10 hours parking in California, for example, and found 7 kilowatt hour, which can be translated to 70 miles of road trip. Why did Aptera design such a car? The main reason is related to the energy needed to move an object surrounded by air. Everybody knows that aerodynamics are very important to reduce the drag force that the air resistance exerts on a car. The drag increases with the square of the speed of an object. The formula is exactly the same for a car, a truck, a motorcycle or my own bicycle. You can apply this formula in every case. The only way to reduce the drag resistance is to change the shape of the vehicle. You see here on the left a Porsche with a drag coefficient of 0.32 compared to the right with a dedicated design made by the Shell company with a nice coefficient of 0.05. But this efficient design is not really pleasant for a family that needs to make a road trip. So you can clearly understand now that the shape of the Aptera car was optimized for power consumption, no, not for a beautiful design. The other problem that you face if you want to run a car is called running resistance. It is a force resisting the motion when a body rolls on a surface. It can be computed based on rolling resistance coefficient and depends on the weight of your car and the quality of the tires. You can see a table on the right. As information about the Aptera car is limited, I have tried to compare their design to a smaller European EV car, the Fiat 500 e with a classical sh shape. The idea is to extrapolate data from the Fiat to apply formulas with the Aptera. You see here the comparison of the two cars. Clearly, the Aptera, thanks to its shape, possesses 
a lower drag coefficient and a smaller rolling coefficient. The total resistance to run the Aptera at 90 km per hour is nearly half the one needed for the Fiat. Consequently, the energy efficiency of the Aptera is very nice. To conclude, the specific design of the Aptera car, dedicated shape construction with high-tech materials, gives this car a clear benefit compared to traditional EV. But the solar cells by themselves can only provide 40 miles of free ride a day. So it's not a real solar-powered car. Some problems need to be solved according to regulation. A crash test has to prove the safety of the car to own the certification. It, it is also only a two-seat car. We know that the solar cells can be degraded just by scratching the surface, by sand, dust, and so on. The optimum power delivered by the solar system mainly depends on the orientation of the surface, the supporting surface, the angle between the surface and the solar rays, and also on clouds and shade and other things. A better free rides need a better solar cell technology. Let me remind you that the lab record can be up to 48%. But this technology is not available for industrial application. For me, the concept of Aptera is appealing, but the market will be a niche market limited to energy conscious people. Thank you for your attention. Hi, Aptera fans. Steve here. We've had an incredible month of momentum, so let's dive in. We took Hermes, our track testing vehicle, on an epic solar road trip starting in snowy Flagstaff, Arizona, and ending in the sun-soaked Imperial Valley. Hermes handled everything from mountain passes, desert winds, to highway cruising, all on a single charge, with solar power assisting the journey. If you haven't watched the full journey, please be sure to click the link at the top right. I can attest to you, you won't want to miss this adventure. Now, Hermes wasn't built for road trips. It was built to be disassembled and tested and refined and iterated on. It's a track testing vehicle meant to validate critical systems, but we couldn't resist taking it out on a 315 mile drive through I-40 and the Route 66 anyway. This wasn't intended to be a range test, but of course we ran the numbers anyway. Keep in mind, Hermes is a bit heavier than our design intent weight due to some of the steel metal components. And it's missing a few aerodynamic treatments, especially around the control arm. So drag was up and weight was up and efficiency wasn't expected to break any records. But before we get to the results, let's have a quick look at the EV landscape. 